what I'm doing uh, in preparation for chinking the cabin is I'm installing this um, metal lath or hardware cloth, maybe it's also called. Um, so I got a big roll of this, I think it's about three feet wide by quite a number of feet long. And I'm cutting strips of it off uh, to fill in the gap um, and I'm installing it at an angle so that there's a drip edge. So if water were to come down here, um, it wouldn't be able to get behind this. Uh, so you'll see it's at an angle and the top of the hardware cloth, a recess underneath the lower edge of the upper log. So that's what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it is I'm measuring the size of the gap just roughly uh, with my finger to see what size hardware cloth strip I need to cut. And then I'm cutting it, I'm inserting it into the gap at an angle. I'm tacking it down with roofing nails at the bottom just to hold it in place. And then I'm using spiral nails. Uh, these are three and a half inch spiral nails that I'm uh, nailing in at an angle to hold the upper part of the hardware cloth. And that's what I'm doing to keep it in place. Um, and then the way I'm doing it is I'm cutting my hardware cloth a little bit long uh, because my logs are all a bit irregular. And then to cut it so that the bottom edge of the hardware cloth fits, fits flush with the uh, upper surface of the lower log, I'm uh, using a grinder to just go along the bottom edge and cut it as flush as I can with the, uh, the log below. Um, and then, yeah, and then that's securing it in place. So, you know, it's, it's there and it's going to serve as a uh, backing material for putting on the chinking. So on my cabin, I've got um, some of my logs after I milled them had wane, meaning that they're not all perfectly square in the corners and some of the logs have some curve. Um, so uh, on this gap, the lower log is square at the top or you know there's a 90 degree corner at the top so I was able to just go along with the grinder and cut along that edge to make sure the hardware cloth um, was flush with the top. Um, down here uh, you'll see this log probably has more wane than any other log I've got uh, but I was able to do roughly the same thing where I, I recessed the upper edge of the hardware cloth and then attached the lower edge of the hardware cloth as high up on the lower log as I could uh, with roofing nails and then again I just took the grinder and as close as I could I cut along to try to make the hardware cloth match the contour of the log. So you'll see how I did that here and what I, what I was trying to do is minimize the amount of hardware cloth that was sitting directly against um, the lower log. So there's a little bit here but there's still some gap I think the main reason people use lath when they're doing this is it gives the mortar something to hold on to when it sets. Um, and when the mortar has something to hold on to, I think it's going to be less prone to cracking and breaking over time. So that would be, I think, the main reason. Uh, other reasons that I can think of um, would be um, for mice or, you know, this would not, I mean, the mortar is going to block mice too, but just another way to prevent anything from getting into your cabin. But the main reason is just a backing material so that you have something to adhere the mortar to, that the mortar will stick to, and that the mortar can grab as it sets. So the, the metal lath, I think, is just one of many ways you can accomplish uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, I've seen cabins in real life, and I've seen YouTube videos of a variety of different ways to do this. Um, I know a guy locally who did it, uh, and really he just used uh, spray foam and nails occasionally with no metal lath. Um, I think historically people have used all sorts of materials, not including metal lath, um, even rocks or moss or anything to fill this gap and act as a backing material for the mortar. So I don't think this is necessarily the best way or the only way in any means, um, but it, it's one way that I've seen done fairly regularly. Um, so that's what I decided to settle on for the way I did it. I'm starting with the chinking on the outside uh, and then I'm going to put the mortar on the outside. Then I'll fill the rest of the gap with insulation of some sort and then I'll do the same process again on the inside of the cabin. Um, so inside I'll still have a metal lath and I'll apply mortar from the inside and then that'll complete the um, chinking and daubing process. So we're here at the uh, Dovetail Log Cabin build and uh, we're doing the chinking process today. Uh, this is a day I've been waiting for for a long time. A lot of people have asked me uh, on comments in the channel and in person uh, why I've left the gaps in the cabin and what I'm going to do with them. Uh, and this video hopefully will answer the question uh, of what I'm doing with those gaps and how I'm filling them. Um, so uh, you've already seen the metal lath process that I put in earlier. 
And so today we've been um, doing the chinking. Um, and to do the chinking, we're making a mixture that we're then applying onto the metal lath or through the metal lath and onto the metal lath. Um, and that will form the exterior of the cabin. So what we're using for the chinking is a mix of three different things, um, sand, Portland cement, and uh, lime. Uh, I got this mixture, uh, well, from some sites on the internet as well as a friend of mine locally who built a cabin maybe 10 years ago and used this same mixture and it worked well for him. Um, so again, the three parts are sand, uh, the first part, which we got from a local gravel pit and uh, we shoveled that out, brought it down in buckets today. Uh, the second part is Portland cement and the third part's lime. We get both of those at a local hardware store. Uh, the sand uh, was pretty good quality as is, but I built a little sieve uh, or filter strainer thing uh, and filtered out some of the larger pieces um, and, then, and then mixed the sand, the Portland cement, and the lime. And the ratio I used was three parts sand, one part Portland cement, half part lime. Uh, and we mixed all those together in a wheelbarrow um, as dry ingredients. And then uh, I would slowly add water uh, and my cousin Patrick was uh, using the hoe to mix it up. Uh, and then we take that and put it on platform things that I built um, with uh, trowels. And then we use uh, the trowels to apply it into the, uh, the gap in the logs. And that, uh, that's what we're doing today. I think like most things in this cabin uh, build, you sort of uh, learn a better way to do it as you go. Um, so one of the things we were finding difficult uh, on some of the gaps um, was uh, the way I've done the metal lath is it's on an angle. So there's a drip edge um, and then but getting the chinking up to uh, the top of that edge was a little tricky, but uh, you'll see on the video uh, or you, you can see that we uh, kind of have a technique that seems to work for that. So that was probably the thing we had the most difficulty with. Um, finding the right consistency of the mortar mix, uh, not adding too much water, but adding enough water. And I think in certain scenarios, it's a little better to have it thicker. Uh, in certain scenarios, it's probably a little better to have it a little more uh, watery, let's say. Um, so those are some of the difficult things. Uh, it's actually been going pretty smoothly. Uh, we got the whole Pennyac Wilderness team down here working today. Uh, so that's really made things uh, helpful uh, or move along better. Um, but no, it's going well so far. We'll see what how it sets up uh, over the next while and if uh, it shrinks a bit if we have to add a little extra, but uh, time will tell on that. The question I'm asked sometimes is, after doing all this so far, am I happy with having settled on doing a cabin with gaps? Uh, I think the answer is yes, because the main reason I was doing it is for the look of the cabin. Um, but I think there's, uh, as you can see in one of my other videos called Why the Gaps, um, many reasons this is beneficial. It's a lot of work, um, but I can't really contrast it with how much work it would have been to have perfectly fully scribed logs. I think that might have been beyond my skill set. Uh, if you'll notice on my cabin, the gaps, they're supposed to be two inches, but the way my milling and logs turned out, some of them are maybe an inch and a bit, some of them are more like three inches. Um, so having the gaps has allowed me to have a lot more imperfection in my build. Um, and then I can just compensate for that by um, filling in a little bit bigger or smaller gap depending on what I'm left with. So I'm hoping to have all of the exterior of the cabin fully chinked before um, the temperature here gets to be below 5 Celsius uh, and hopefully even before then. And I'm told that it's good to let the mortar sit at least for 24 hours without it getting below that temperature. So, you know, in eastern Canada I, I suppose I'd like to have it all done by October 1st. Um, weather's a bit variable here. Sometimes we'll still have warm days then, but that's what I have as a goal.